All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, Pook, with a video for uh, Busan Kevin to congratulate him on 100 episodes of his uh, Just Japan podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. So uh, for those of you who don't know, um, I was actually a very early on guest of Kevin's uh, back when he first started the Just Japan podcast, episode three, being in the U.S. Navy in Japan. To commemorate 100 episodes of the Just Japan podcast, Busan Kevin uh, issued a thing asking a lot of his recurring guests um, what their first week in Japan is like. And uh, I thought I'd share this with you in video because <laughs> I missed the cut, you know, because uh, of time and I had a lot of other things going on. I was sick that particular week, so it is what it is. So. Now you get to hear about it, so yeah. Anyway, so for those of you who don't know, um, I was in the United States Navy. Before I went over to Japan, I was stationed on the USS Kurtz, FFG 38, based in San Diego, California. I did a six month deployment with her, uh, decommed her for about two months, did the whole preparations for all that. Then after that, after we decommed, um, I went back to sonar school to learn a new uh, sonar system. And from there, I was sent, I had orders to go to USS Lassen, DDG-82, out in Yokosuka, Japan. They're currently going through a port shift right now, so they've shifted from Yokosuka to Mayport slash Jacksonville, Florida. So they're kind of in the middle of that right now. But at the time, they were stationed in Yokosuka, Japan, which is where I was at. <laughs> After I had packed all my bags and checked out and everything like that, I took about I think it was five sea bags in total. Uh, for those who don't know what a sea bag is, it's those big green uh, duffel bag looking things that you see a lot of military personnel carrying around when they're uh, shifting stuff over. And you know, you see uh, like the goodbye photos and stuff like that. So just look for the big green uh, duffel bags. So I had about five of those worth of stuff. <laughs> cause you know, I didn't know when I was gonna be coming back to America cause I didn't know anything about uh, what the operation uh, the op tempo, the operational tempo was like over in Japan, which I would soon find out. <laughs> it was pretty stressful. But in any event, so I gathered uh, five sea bags worth of stuff, my backpack, and uh, myself <laughs> on a, on uh, three flights altogether. Uh, the first flight was from San Diego to LAX, the Los Angeles airport, and then from LAX to SeaTac, which is the Seattle Tacoma airport and uh, I had to wait about five hours to get on the next flight from SeaTac to Yokota Air Force Base in Japan, which is about two, two and a half hours by car uh, from Yokosuka. So I had to wait for five hours and it was just terrible because I was exhausted from everything. And uh, when I finally got on the flight, I was able to sleep a little bit. I don't really typically sleep on flights, I just, I, I catch little naps here and there, but you know, it's, <laughs> it is what it is, I guess. I went on the flight from uh, SeaTac to Yokota. That took about 12 hours, I think, altogether ish. And uh, from there, we landed in Yokota. I got my quick little briefing on uh, stuff to worry about in Japan, you know, culturalisms and stuff like that. It was just really quick, bam, 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 kind of dealio. Then uh, hopped on a bus to Yokosuka with all my stuff and was just, you know, constantly looking outside the window of the bus, just looking at, at life in Japan, you know, just houses and people walking around and stores and trees and everything pretty much. And it was just amazing because it was just the culmination of everything that I'd worked for up to that point was to come out to Japan. And I didn't think it was gonna happen just because, you know, I didn't have a college degree and that's one of the main requirements to get a work visa in Japan, if you're an American anyway. Uh, if you're not, there's other ways you can get around it. But for the most part, you need a uh, four-year college degree. So um, I managed to find a little loophole out of that, I guess, by being stationed out there through the uh, US Navy, so military clause and all that kind of stuff, which afforded me a lot of uh, good opportunities that uh, your regular Joe Blow English teacher doesn't typically get, which is pretty nice. And uh, anyway, so I was on the bus ride from Yokota to Yokosuka, 
And that took about two, two and a half hours to get there. And then uh, I was greeted by somebody who was from my ship, from my division, actually. He, uh, <laughs> he has a very thick French accent. And it was kind of like, I, I wasn't quite sure if he was French or if he was uh, like Russian or something like that. I couldn't quite place the accent at the time, but it turns out he was from uh, Belgium. So, you know, he spoke French and stuff like that. So he, his accent was very thick and I couldn't really understand him. And I thought it was just like tired and like, what's is going on, dude? <laughs> so like we had some McDonald's because it was a long flight and I hadn't eaten anything. And then took all my stuff over to the ship so I could uh, check in, unpack all my bags, uh, put them in my rack, which was uh, where you sleep on a ship. It's basically just like, a bed and then a storage compartment underneath the bed then you have like a, a little tiny uh like little stand-up locker not a full stand-up like a half stand-up basically so you can put extra things in there as well so i began the process of unpacking everything and stuff like that my lpo which is basically like a, a manager for non-navy people said you know hey you know welcome aboard all that kind of stuff um quarters which is our daily morning meetings will be, uh, you know, 0730, make sure you're dressing you from the day, all that kind of stuff. You know, Liberty expires 07, so which means you have to be on board by seven o'clock in the morning. And since I didn't have an apartment or anything like that at the time, I was pretty much living on the ship. So, <laughs> um, once I got done unpacking and everything like that, um, I took a couple hour nap because, you know, they didn't have any work for me that day. They just, you know, as long as I checked in and had all my stuff, issued and everything, you know, they're fine. So I didn't start working until the next day. Uh, so in the meantime, um, after I got done unpacking everything and took like a couple hour nap, woke up, got dressed in civilian attire and uh, left the ship, went out into town, into Yokosuka and uh, just explored the area. You know, there's a lot to do if uh, you've ever visited uh, Yokosuka, a lot to see and uh, I was just, taken aback by everything. And uh, I had studied a little bit of Japanese before coming over just so that way I wouldn't be completely uh, like a fish out of water with uh, the whole thing. So I explored the, uh, the local town, went to uh, several places, most notably a ramen restaurant right across from base. And then I went to uh, Koko Ichibanya, which is a very famous uh, curry restaurant. It's a curry uh, restaurant chain out in Japan. And so uh, for the first week, I pretty much uh, did my normal duties on the ship, uh, got checked in and stuff like that and started uh, progressively uh, getting used to how things are done on uh, the last and stuff like that. And then I spent the, the first week pretty much uh, just checking in. So I didn't do like a whole lot of work. It was mostly just going to uh, different departments, getting signatures and stuff like that and uh, checking in and all that fun stuff. Once the uh, the weekend hit, which is only a, a couple days after I arrived, I think I arrived on like a Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that, so it didn't take very long. Um, I managed to uh, get my first PASMO card and uh, you can get them like custom made with your name on it and stuff like that, so it's pretty cool. And uh, hopped on a train out to Tokyo to see the sights and all that fun stuff. Uh, the whole idea was to just see a lot of uh, the same sites that uh, a lot of J vloggers that I watched over the years went to. You know, a lot of the the main touristy spots of Tokyo. You know, going to Akihabara and uh, stuff like that. Going to Tokyo Tower and you know just walking around Tokyo in general because you know, I was so new to Japan and that whole area. You know, because I just arrived. So you know, it's kind of funny to think. Uh, how adventurous I was, especially, you know, those first couple weeks, couple months, even. And just, you know, how I would always uh, go out and explore. And like every, every week I would think of something, okay, so uh, this weekend I'm gonna go to this place, and then next week I'm gonna go to the next place, and just like, like I had a rhythm and a flow going. It was really cool. I was out in Japan for about two years. In September of 2015, I uh, officially was honorably discharged from the U.S. Navy and from there uh, moved from Japan back to America here in uh, Portage, Michigan 
where uh, I'm going to school, going back to college uh, here at Western Michigan University. I'm studying computer information systems and uh, just moving on to the next chapter of my life. I am really grateful for my time in Japan. It was a blast. I got to meet so many amazing people and uh, just got to experience so much from living over there. And I would absolutely love to go back um, if given the opportunity. And I'm actually pursuing opportunities to do that, but uh, it's gonna take some time, so, cause I just started school and all that, so. It's gonna take some time, but uh, I will be back. <laughs> Someday, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, my first week in Japan. And then my second week in Japan, um, I wanna talk about it a little bit because it gets into uh, some funny stuff. Navy personnel that are new to, the, to Japan, basically, um, they have this program called AOBICR. And what that is, is it, it's basically an intercultural relationship thing. For one week, you go to this class in an auditorium and uh, you get to meet different uh, personnel, different members of the chain of command on base. You know, you get to meet, you know, the CO of, ba of uh, the Yokosuka Naval Base and stuff like that. And you get to meet different people like the guy who runs the post office and stuff like that. And you get maps of the base and of the local Yokosuka area, you know, so you know where restaurants and uh, malls and stuff like that are and uh, you're taught uh, certain uh, Japanese culturalisms and stuff like that. So that way you don't, you're not that, that guy. <laughs> you're not that gaijin, that foreigner that's, you know, not understanding what Japan's about and making a lot of uh, faux pas out there and, you know, making a bad example of yourself and of the foreigner community in general. That's the whole idea behind the class. And uh, a lot of the stuff I already knew was basic Japanese stuff, whatever. The cool thing was, at the end of the class, uh, the very last day, you would go to uh, Kamakura, which is a hot spot for a lot of like Japanese shrines and stuff like that. It's really cool. And then in a town over in Hase, you get to visit the Daibutsu, or the Great Giant Buddha statue. And uh, it's just really cool and a really uh, definitely a must see if you're in the Kanagawa area, especially if you're near Yokosuka. Definitely go to see uh, the Daibutsu and Kamakura. And just Kamakura in general, it's uh, an amazing place. So we got to go there, we got to eat ramen and all kinds of stuff, and it was just amazing. And uh, that was basically my first uh, two weeks in Japan. You got that little extra bonus there. Yeah, it was a little different from uh, your typical English teacher, jet person that comes over, but uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. And with that said, this is the Andy san Signing for now, thanking you guys, Poop, for tuning into this video and for watching my other stuff. And I also want to, again, thank uh, Busan Kevin, Jalen Kev, whatever you want to call him, Kevin O'Shea. I <laughs> uh, want to congratulate him on uh, 100 episodes of the Just Japan podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. I wish him uh, more success with the podcast. I can't wait to hear more episodes and stuff like that. And uh, I also want to thank uh, the rest of you guys for liking the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.